Today we're going to be talking about what to pack in your hospital bag in preparation for that moment when you welcome your new ones into this world. Hi, I'm Denny, and this is Practical Mommy Loves Luxury. Welcome to my series of videos for new or expecting parents. I have quite an inclusive list of things today to pack in your hospital bag. It is a fairly long list because I've included everything that I can think of so that this video will be helpful to really any person. Now, everyone will need different things in their hospital bag because everyone is different and everyone will have different circumstances around the birth of their child. Some of these stuff I packed, some of these stuff I didn't. Even if you're a minimalist person, I think it would be helpful for you to watch this video as well. And you can kind of go through the list and cross out the stuff that you don't want to bring along. The list includes mommy and baby stuff only. I haven't included a list for the support person because that is really personal and it will depend on the circumstance. For example, how many nights will your support person be allowed to stay in hospital? Will they be allowed to stay in hospital at all? As you are watching this video, create a list and stick it somewhere where everyone in the family can see it, for example, the fridge door. Because you can then add items to it as you think about it and so can your partner or even your mother. Jumping straight into the content, the first item you will need is luggage. The size and the number of luggages you pack for this time, again, will be quite individualized. It depends on how many days you'll be staying in hospital. Some hospitals, you stay one or two nights. Some hospitals will allow you to stay five or six nights. So do check ahead of time. And if you don't live that far away from the hospital, it's not such a big deal if you just want to pack enough for the first two or three nights. Your family or your partner might be able to go home and get all the extra stuff for you. If you decide to take the latter approach, I still suggest that you pack this spare bag so that your partner can just grab the bag and bring it to hospital for you. The last thing you need is to try and describe to your partner which item of clothing you want and where you've kept it and they can't find it and they bring you something that you don't want at all. With the list that I've got, if you decide to pack everything, you will probably need a very large luggage and then some. Overpacking is my personal preference because I really don't like not having essential items with me and then having going to the shops to have to pay for something that I already have. All right, so starting with the mummy stuff, pack something to wear during labor. When a woman is in labor, it is easier to wear a dress that goes to maybe around the knees. This means that the mother can skip wearing underwear or pants, which then makes it easier for physical examinations. Otherwise, when you're in labor, sometimes it helps to pace the hallways of the hospital. And in that situation, if it's going to be cold around the time that you're about to have your baby, do make sure that you have a jumper or a robe or a long cardigan and also convenient shoes to get on and off. Slip-on slippers are easier because they're easier to remove to get in and out of bed. And also don't forget to bring all the items that you want to use during labor. On this list, some women would include a TENS machine. If you've not heard of a TENS machine, it is a machine that's got some electrodes. You stick it over areas of pain and when you switch it on, it sort of gives you a massage by contracting your muscles. Other women might want to bring along a bouncy gym ball because sometimes that can help during labor. You may like to bring along some massage oil if you're planning for your partner to massage you while you're in labor. And then the next thing is to think about the things that you wear when the baby is born. So the number of sets of clothing that you will bring will depend on how many nights you'll be in hospital. During this period, I would still suggest that you bring comfortable clothing to wear because you want to be comfortable while you're learning all these new things that you have to do with your new one. After the baby is born, the belly doesn't go flat straight away. You still look like you're about six months pregnant after the baby is born. I know. <laughs> and I'll insert a picture of myself here. And just a quick side story. So the baby always gets weighed and their weight is documented on a daily basis. When I asked the midwife for scales for myself to stand on, she said, oh no, we deliberately do not have scales for adults in this hospital because mums are often extremely disappointed with how much weight they have lost after the baby is born. So just warning you, I still wore a lot of my own maternity clothes because they obviously still fit and they were really comfortable. A lot of the maternity clothes that I owned had a nursing feature anyway, so that made it convenient to wear. I have made a whole other video on breastfeeding essentials and preparing them before the baby is born. So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch it. I'll be making references to a number of items that I've talked about in that video. So moving along, I would suggest that you bring along 
your Kmart maternity camisoles or some sort of nursing camisoles that have drop down clips so that you can pull down the bra cup really easily to feed the baby. I would suggest that you have a pyjama top or a robe or a cardigan that opens up in front for easy access when you're learning how to breastfeed the baby. If you have other preferences like nursing bras, do bring them along as well. And I would suggest that you bring at least one set of nice clothes for photographs. Don't forget your footwear as well, so definitely one pair of comfortable footwear. Otherwise, also don't forget one pair of fancy shoes for your photographs. Also, don't forget socks. If anything, bring one pair. It can get really cold in hospital sometimes. The next items are your personal essentials. So things for your face, your hair, your body. If you have creature comforts that you really enjoy, such as your favorite perfume or your favorite hair mask, I would strongly suggest that you bring them along as well. It can make a whole difference to your mood when you have your little favorite items with you. The next thing is maternity pads or sanitary pads. You will be needing them after the baby is born because you will bleed. Check if your hospital will supply these, and if they don't, certainly bring your own. The next thing is hair ties. Do not underestimate the importance of hair ties, especially if you have long hair. I wore my hair in a ponytail for approximately a year because my hair was getting in my daughter's eyes as I was breastfeeding her. The next things are eye masks and earplugs. And this is because you'll be sleeping at odd times of the day. For example, if your baby has kept you up all night, you might take an opportunity to try and take a nap in the day. However, in a hospital, you may be in a shared room. And in that case, you want to have your eye mask and your earplugs there to block out any external stimulation. The next things are your breastfeeding stuff. So your breast pump, your breast milk bags, multi-mams, nipple shields if you got them, nipple balm, breast or nursing pads, cold or hot compresses, your galactagogues or your lactation cookies. So with this stuff, I've talked about all of them in my last video, so I'm not going to go into detail about them today. I've thrown in formula bottles and formula because even if you're intending on breastfeeding, sometimes the supply may not come straight away and you may want to choose to supplement your baby's feeding with formula. If you are quite particular as to which formula you want to use, I would suggest that you bring that to hospital as well. At my hospital, formula was supplied, but I don't know if this is universal, so please do check ahead. I would also suggest that you bring some items to pass time. This can be magazines or books. If you want to bring a laptop for movies, I would suggest that you bring an old laptop that you're not going to miss because hospitals are not secure and there's a risk of personal items going missing. <laughs> and if you're going to bring your laptop, don't forget your chargers and your headphones. Now moving on to baby stuff. So baby clothes, things like singlets, onesies, tops, pants, socks, mittens. You may be thinking of bringing a hat and if you have one, sure, you may consider bringing it. However, before you put it on your baby, have a chat to the clinicians about what the recommendations are. When I was in hospital, it was recommended that um, babies don't wear any hats because that's how they regulate their body temperature. And if babies get too warm, there's a risk of sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. In terms of how many sets of clothes to bring for your baby, my rule was to bring one and a half times the number of days that they'll be there. This is because they don't necessarily just wear one set of clothes per day. They may have a wee or a poo or a vomit accident. Having said that, most of the time the hospital has spare baby clothes to wear if you run into that problem. And of course, don't forget a nice outfit for a photograph. Also bring some nappies and baby wipes for your baby. The hospital that I was at provided all this. However, if you wanted to use a specific brand or if your hospital didn't supply it, do make sure that you bring these along as well. In terms of how many nappies, if you're going to pack them, I think it is relatively safe to pack six nappies per 24 hours that you're going to be in hospital. And then muslin cloths, which are good for lots of things. You can swaddle your baby, you can use them as a towel, you can use them as a burp cloth, but you may want to bring a nice one so that you can photograph your baby in it. And then baby toiletries like shampoo, body lotion, body soap. I've got a dummy or a pacifier on my list. This is very controversial. I did see it on other people's lists. I packed a dummy myself. It is controversial because it is advised that breastfeeding is established before a dummy is given to the baby. So that depends on how long it takes for you to establish breastfeeding. By the time you leave hospital, you may still be working on breastfeeding. And the very last but very important thing, especially if you live in Australia, is a car seat. 
And that's because babies aren't legally allowed to travel in a car unless they're restrained in a car seat. My hospital actually checked that we had a car seat before they allowed us to take my daughter home. If you don't have a car seat already and you're not sure where to start, I have made a whole video on Australian baby car seats. So go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a link up here for you. Now, when do you pack a hospital bag? I think anywhere from 36 weeks is fair game. I had most of my stuff packed at around 34 weeks, except my maternity clothes because I was wearing them all the time and I only had about 10 sets of maternity clothes, but everything else was more or less ready. Once it's packed, put your stuff close to the door. My next video is going to be on breastfeeding tips from a mother who had low supply. To make sure you don't miss that video, do subscribe by clicking on that red button and also click on that notification bell so you will get informed when that video becomes available. While you wait for that video, feel free to enjoy these videos over here. I hope you found this video helpful and if you like this video, please click on that like button and also share it far and wide. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.